Uh, you asked me for the title of, of my talk, and, uh, and I, I do thank you for inviting me. This is quite interesting. Uh, it's been fascinating listening to the talks this morning. I enjoyed it a lot. And I was trying to figure out, well, the title of my talk is What is the X in V to X Communication and Why Does It Matter? And I think I figured out what the X probably means, either I or V. Now I think I figured out what it means. But I didn't know that until about 15 minutes ago. So I thought X was anything. Uh, so, because, you know, X. But um, anyway, uh, really, to paraphrase the title of my talk, really, and I, I don't know how to quite put this into words, but uh, I'll try. Um, and I, I tried to put it in the form of a question, and... and and the question is, I guess, another question, which is, does the application influence the design of the communication infrastructure it is designed to support? And of course, you would all say, of course, it should. But uh, I think we would all agree if we kind of all stand back and think about things of how things have evolved over the last 20 or 30 years that pretty much, although people try to anticipate what, what would be happening these days, pretty much they, they didn't. Uh, the designers of communication infrastructure pretty much did not anticipate, you know, what this stuff was going to be used for, which is fine. Uh, but uh, I think when I look at a field like this and the and the the the, uh, the apparent goals of of the community, which are, I think are great, um, it they're so far-reaching and so seemingly futuristic, that you really do wonder, you know, at some level, you know, is this going to happen, or, and how is this going to happen, really? How is it going to happen? Uh, and it all sounds really good, uh, but uh, there are a lot of issues, a lot of really, I think, tremendously interesting issues that I would say that a lot of times engineers don't normally think about. But as kind of, I, I consider myself somewhat of a system engineer these days where the system is, is more broadly uh, defined and, and, and thinking about the overall goals and how we're going to get there is really a pretty interesting question in this field. So in particular, uh, uh, really I, I guess that at a gut level, I mean, I guess people have tried to say this, but, and to the man on the street, what is this stuff really for? Uh, I mean, what are we doing here? What, what are we really trying to do? And I think we all have a, a, a pretty good sense of some common thing. You know, we want to improve traffic. We want to make things better. Uh, but even really, when you consider and you start getting more specific and say, okay, we're going to be worrying about vehicular traffic control, because that's really something that I have started to look at myself from kind of a scientific sort of analytical, mathematical point of view. And uh, when I start thinking about the problems uh, that I think we should be thinking about, uh, I, I really come up with more questions than I do answers, uh, and really that are pretty hard questions, really, that are, I don't know if their, do their domain of engineers to be answered. I mean, really, what is the objective of these networks? Uh, of course, it, I think I've heard one or two talks say the objective is safety, of course, uh, wasted time on the highways. Those are uh, very, uh, certainly what comes to my mind. But when you think of those two uh, objectives, immediately there is conflict. Right. I mean, the best way to have safety is not to have cars. Right. No throughput equals zero. Right. That is a very safe thing, and you might laugh, but uh, actually, it is. Someone brought this to my attention, and I just I never really thought about it. But I saw this article last week. Uh, said something like, you know, "You're probably all familiar with. It. You drive around in cars, you see these cameras." on the intersection, maybe you've even gotten tickets before because you've driven along and maybe you took a right turn on red <clears> or <throat> went a little too fast 
and you might get this ticket in the mail saying, you know, congratulations, you've won an award. Uh, and uh, it all sounds really good. I mean, it's all really good, but, and, and it really is, I think. But, uh, I, you know, some of these reports you hear, I, I, don't, I don't know really how much credence to weigh on these things, but it's something to think about. Some, some people have done some studies on these, on these traffic lights, and they have found, I mean, someone wrote a paper, I think, that said, actually, if you just increase the time of a yellow signal, you know, the time where the thing is yellow, that's way more cost effective at reducing accidents than the, the camera. And it, just the way that this has been playing out, uh, I, it's kind of interesting, the economics of it all. There are startup companies, there are apparently a company that makes these devices. I hope they're maybe not even in, maybe perhaps they're even in the audience, I don't know. And the business model is that company gets a cut for every uh, traffic citation there is. Now, maybe that's a good thing, I don't know, but uh, uh, what the, the reports I hear, you know, I don't know if it's true, but, you know, supposedly some cities have been caught, so to speak, that, you know, sneaking around, basically, they actually reduced the yellow time because it maximizes <clears throat> revenue. That's what this is really about, money, getting money from you. Uh, to support the highway. So that's a good thing. I mean, we all agree, you know, someone has to pay for this. But it's, it's one of those interesting questions to think about. Uh, personally, when I, I, I saw, I think, one, of, one or two of the, the talks this morning, I think maybe perhaps the previous one, and yeah, this is just a personal thing, not political or anything, but uh, the VMT, vehicle, what is it called? Vehicle mileage tax. To me, that is the scariest thing you could possibly imagine. It's like, okay, we're going to monitor, see how many microns you've traveled. Well, we'll might as well record your entire trajectory while we're at it. So that that's you know not a bad thing, I guess, but it's something to think about. I don't think we should just design these things without thinking about how they're going to be used. So uh, anyway, uh, so really, when you ask yourself, what is this stuff going to be used for? It's kind of another conflict. Personally, uh, I guess the first thing that comes, and actually the top of the list on uh, on the previous slides, application was entertainment. And let's face it, come on, that really is an application. Uh, and let's face it, now cell phone use is illegal in the cars. And, and how many people, they won't raise their hands, but how many people here have used their cell phone in the car illegally in the last week? I would say probably almost everyone. It's like speed. It's like speeding on the road. I mean, you can't not use your cell phone on the on the. the people use it all the time. They just do it in a very safe, responsible way. It's it's funny, you know. I was realizing in my own car, which is a Prius, I, I cannot uh, access the navigation system because it says, "Oh no, I can't do that." But I can turn on the radio. Kind of, I just thought that was kind of funny. I guess it's sort of natural, I guess, but at some other level, it's very non-intuitive. But um, so anyway, uh, I guess I wasn't going to make this commercial, but uh, we, the, I, I guess one of the, I guess, points I really wanted to try to make, it's really just uh, 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 a uh, conjecture, really, is that that this is going to happen, that we are going to get to this utopia that we're all talking about. But I, I suspect, and this is my own personal conjecture, we're going to get there in a lot different way than we think we're going to get there. Because the economic drivers, I don't believe, are there. Uh, either, either this is, we're not going to pay for this. Who's going to go out and pay, you know, 3000 extra dollars for a little more safety? No one. The only way this is going to happen is if the government forces down <coughs> companies' throats, which might be a good thing. I don't know, but it's an interesting, it's a really interesting thing. I think, I personally, I think the way this might unfold is there will be other applications which will drive this. 
and I don't know if it's entertainment. I mean, here I have one application here I brought with me. I didn't want this to be an advertisement, but we, my company actually does make vehicle to uh, X communications, and what this device is, it was actually designed to operate in a camera. This is a, a battery that normally fits into a professional camera. It's a standard, it fits in there. So this is the little invention we have that basically, instead of plugging in the camera, you plug in this device, and then you can plug the battery on top of it, and the battery powers the device and the camera. And what is it? Basically, it has cable on it, and it's pretty simple, that's why we like, like to describe it like this, it's easy to describe to customers, but basically, video. You stick it in, how are you going to get there? Well, you're going to use 3G networks, 4G networks, whatever, LT, whatever. We'll just plug it in, all right, because it's commodity stuff, and it wasn't, it really wasn't, they would like the stuff to carry video, but let's face it, it doesn't. So you pl plug a lot of these things in. And what we do is basically have a proprietary bonding technology, which is it's a hard, harder problem than it looks because of these channels are very time varying and very unreliable. And what we want to do is move video from anywhere to anywhere, essentially. And I guess the interesting thing, this, this actually works in a car. You've tried it going about 60 miles, and it's, the, the video is beautiful. It's unbelievable. We're just trying to figure out what do you do with this stuff? <laughs> Who care? I mean, really, what do you want? What do you care about a high resolution video going all around? I mean, we're trying to sell it to the news organizations, and, and I think I think they'll find a use for this. But and I think it is pretty useful. And I actually I think the the biggest use now I think is public safety, the law enforcement and uh, emergency. And so we're pretty excited about this particular thing. But here's an example of an application. We basically designed something around that wasn't intended to support this, but it's a, just a, a point example of what you do to get things done when things aren't really the way you want them to be. And that's reality, and that's really the way that VTX communication really is today. So sorry I really didn't have much of a point, but uh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.